Coach Loco Doco from TSM. Hi. So coming into that game, right, you know you're facing uh, Cloud9 team, historically very big favorites against you guys. This is your second win ever against C9 in, in professional play. What was the plan heading in? Um, we actually meant to first pick Braum. We knew they would pick, uh, we were planning on running a TF comp, and we knew they would run Fizz. Uh, Rengar jungle, we didn't really expect, but we just had a really solid plan on how we were going to play TF, and the guys pulled it off. Why go for a t Why come in saying, okay, it's Cloud9, we want to run Twisted Fate? Like, what is that thought process? It's not even that we're playing against Cloud9. Like, um, just watching how they play, I realized they play really well with TF, and that was a comp that I wanted to develop, and I knew Bjergsen could be really good with, so didn't really matter who we were playing against. Uh, I just wanted to play a TF comp, and we did it. Did anything change in pick spans that you could see, um, you know, as a coach on the sideline when Cloud9 are locking in all these assassins and invisible characters, or were you expecting a lot of that coming in? We expected Fizz. Uh, Rengar was a surprise pick, mm -hmm. but other than that, like, it was pretty standard. Okay, well, yourself as a uh, coach coming into TSM, coming into a team that's already halfway through a split, what was your game plan just overall, uh, you know, coming over to the United States and joining TSM? I mean, just get them to be good and make playoffs <laughs> and go back to Korea for Worlds. So where do you start with a team like that? Do you come in and you just want to change your scrim schedule or is it... Scrim schedule, how they wake up, what they eat, and just the general mindset. Like, Gleave and Amazing, the Reddit post and Twitter post, it was wrecking them. So no social media for them. And they played so aggressive and they actually did their job. Gleave had a lot of great flash, um, flash plays and Amazing made early gank, something they weren't doing weeks before. So really happy with how things turned out. You mentioned changing around like sleep schedules, scrim schedules. Like, what is the regimen you're putting TSM on? We're not completely on it yet, but it's like sleeping around midnight and waking up around eight and nine. This is like, I think that's a really good schedule to be on. Like, wake up in the morning. We live really nice, or we live really close to a nice beach. Um, walk down to the beach and come back in the morning for minimum exercise. Just little stuff like that. All right, so let's start talking a little bit about, about the in-game play here from TSM on this game. We have first play coming up is going to be the first blood, if we can get this on your screen. This is one where TSM, since you guys have the blue side duo bottom around Dragon, you have control of the area. However, Cloud9 come to contest it. You know, as a coach on the sideline, what was going through your mind as this play is happening? This is a free kill. Like, this is what I thought. Like, this is our first blood. We, like, great positioning by Amazing and Gleave, Dyrus, all of them waiting there. Dyrus has E learned here instead of W, and he didn't get the double damage proc off on E, which he should have during the CC, and that would have been a kill on Lemon. That's something I would like to see. But still, like, Fizz missing all this farm and him getting killed early, it alleviates a lot of pressure for TF, because TF has a really hard time early game versus Fizz. I think that really put us ahead. And so, you know, looking at this game and, and realizing, like, their whole team is full of assassins, I know no, like, two games of League are ever alike, but, like, how do you coach a team into playing against sort of different types of team comps, like, reacting to a, a different setup every game? Um, realize your own win conditions and realize their win conditions and just pull off yours better. Like, their win condition right there, or with their comp was just team fights and picks, and our win condition was split push and getting vision and making picks also. And we just pulled it off better. We had better vision control, and we... When you run TF, it's really important that the AD and TF have good synergy because the gold cards, like, um, this, the AD and TF needs to stay together in, in team fights and pick people off one by one, like the front lines. And Turtle and Bjerg pulled it off really well. So you have to get that like, coordination kind of across classes. Then is there a way that you kind of up that synergy? You just kind of let them know, like, when you're running TF, like, make sure you guys do this in the scrims, and you you see that kind of progress throughout the games. Because Bjerg and Amazing will pick a lot of the fights. I always say. Like, when we're running TF comp, make sure Turtle is in position before you do it. And Turtle, communicate when you're out of position and don't let them fight, like, when we're out of position. All right, well, we have one more replay. This yep. is going to be a th uh, three kills for TSM by the red buff here. I'm going to get this one on your screen. Uh, this is a bit later, after you guys do have a pretty handy leg up in the game. So walk us through this one. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, this fight, it's... They committed so much on Turtle, but Turtle still lived, and he can get his full damage off now on Shivana. And Dyrus got the kill on Meteos after he committed and used all his damage. So now it's just easy cleanup. And then High commits right there, and Gleeb gets such a good play off right there. It's So, you were talking before a lot about um, you know, win conditions, and a lot of the guys have been using that term. Basically, those are like the strengths of the team comp that you have 
picked. Mm -hmm. you know, what fights will be an advantageous scenario for you guys? And you want to obviously fight as many of those as possible. How do you go about coaching a team in that? Do you bring examples of specific team comps and say, this is a team comp that has a lot of mobility and they're going to want to do X, X, and X? Or how do you uh, I mean, bring that to your, the attention of your players? We go through the pick and bans, like in scrims, and after the pick and bans are over, I talk to the guys, like, okay, this is what you need to do with your comp. If you have an Italy, then you poke, and you get side vision and make sure you don't get flanked. If you have TF, then you have strong laners that can coordinate ganks with them. Just talk about win conditions, and if they don't pull it off right in game, uh, just go through the replay and show, like, you should, have doing, you should have been doing this and this there. Just go over what they did wrong. So it's beginning of going over replays, then you guys just finished your match. You have some time now to collect yourselves and think to tomorrow's game against Complexity. Have you guys thought about that yet, or is it going to be, you know, bounce from this and go? Well, I want to watch what Complexity plays today and scout a bit. Uh, we have something planned, and depending on what they played today, we'll, we're going to adjust our second plan on what we use. So you come into a week actually knowing what you're going to play in game one and game two? Yeah. That's awesome. It's good to hear that you guys like. I don't know. Like, I, I'm always curious to see like how teams kind of prepare. Is the thing you're uh, looking at them to play Rengar and Westrice, or is it more of a mid lane oriented like? Andy I can't Cohen? tell you. Cody. Uh, okay, okay. All I right. think it's Rengar and Westrice. That's what everybody's <laughs> looking at. We'll, we'll see that one happens. Okay, so uh, from here, you guys have looked a whole lot better. Uh, how long do you guys at number one? I mean, <laughs> how long? Because I know what you want to hit number one. I know your goals are a world. Like, that's a free question. Yeah. I want to know how long it takes to you hit that. If we can keep this up, I mean, I feel like we're going to have a positive record versus everyone. Like, how, how many games does it take for us to get number one? Uh, right now, you're what, like three games back of first? So okay. if Depends you can cause three losses on Dig. Too. So it's going to take two weeks. <laughs> two weeks? <laughs> okay. Two weeks first place. I like Don't that. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Look at oh 14, two weeks first place. We've got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to jump into our next match. Evil Geniuses taking on LMQ. The summer split continues right after this. <laughs>